My name is Latasha Wilson, and I'm with the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at the OSU Library. Today is October 28th, 2011, and I'm talking with Carolyn Garber here at the OSU Library. Thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure, Latasha. Welcome back to OSU. Yes. <laughs> for your 50-year class reunion. Um, are there any particular reasons why you decided to attend your reunion? It worked out really well because last Saturday night was the 100th uh, birthday for the church that my family actually started. Uh, my grandfather was a charter member of that church. Okay. So we decided to extend our vacation, or well, we're retired now, so no days vacation anymore. Uh, to this weekend also so I could go to the 50th reunion so that's it worked I probably would have come anyway but it really worked out well and that church was in Stillwater yes and it was Salem Lutheran Church oh wow so uh, it mm -hmm. started out actually about 17 miles west of here it was called the Freedmen's Church <clears throat> when it began uh -huh. but in 1911 it was started uh, I mean 1811 1911 it was started in Stillwater Oklahoma. wow yes Neat. So that was a great celebration, so I'm looking forward to this one. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular <laughs> events or things you're interested in doing while you're here for centered around home? I am taking in everything that they have assigned me to or that they have put on the list. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband is being very gracious and is attending most of those things with me. Um, and um, so today we have this wonderful uh, coffee at 10 o'clock at the College of Human Sciences and then a luncheon, and then this afternoon we're going to do a golf tour of the campus. Oh, wow. uh, this campus has expanded greatly, but this campus is one of the most beautiful campuses, and I have been to many because my husband was in college administration and so forth. So I've been to many campuses, but this is just still one of the top. <laughs> it is a beautiful campus. Well, let's back up a little and tell me about your early life, where you were born. Okay. And I was born on a farm uh, northwest of Stillwater, Oklahoma um, in uh, 1940. Um, that farmhouse still exists. We no longer own that. It was sold, I believe, in maybe 1996. Um, my parents, of course, are both deceased, but um, this was a family farm that was in the family from about 19, probably 1913 to 1996. Hmm. Wow. So that's where I lived and I lived in that house and went to school at uh, Oklahoma State University. And you graduated from Stillwater High School? Just graduated from it. Then it was Stillwater High School. Mm -hmm. What year did you graduate? 1957. Okay. Um, so did you always know that you would attend OSU since you were from Stillwater? Yes. And in and at that time, there weren't too many students from Stillwater High School. They even went to, out to other places. Almost many of us all went to Oklahoma State University. I think there were a few that went to other schools, but today I think kids spread out a little bit more, but mm -hmm. in those days we all just wanted to, it was Oklahoma State. Were you a first generation college student or did you, had your parents attended? No, no, my parents hadn't, but I have uh, two uncles that have um, bachelor's and master, bachelor's, at least bachelor's degrees, and one has a master's degree from OSU. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was Oklahoma A&M, mm -hmm. but neither parent, no. Do you have siblings? Uh, I have three siblings, and one uh, graduated also from uh, OSU and has a master's from OSU, and the other two attended but did not graduate from OSU. So you started in 1957? 1957, and I graduated in 1961. Okay, and did you live at home your first year? Or did most you move on most to time, I either lived at home or with um, a, a sister in town or my grandmother. Um, and I li only lived on campus for about nine weeks, and that was in the sorority house my senior year. What sorority was that? Alpha Chi Omega. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you decide your major from the beginning? Very or? early. Uh, as a young child, I decided I wanted to teach home economics. And that was because a, a wonderful home demonstration agent came out to a one-room country school where I went to school my first seven years. 
and I just thought that'd be the neatest job in the world. <laughs> and I never left that idea. I have no idea, uh, but anyway, I've always enjoyed it, and uh, then I got more interested in dietetics world, and so I put the emphasis on dietetics rather than just home economics education. What was the name of the one-room school you attended? Fair Plains. Plans. And where was that located? It was, um, again, uh, northwest of Stillwater. Hmm. Um, I believe it's called Lakeview Road now. Okay. And um, that school's no longer in existence, period. Hmm. But, uh, yes. And my, my father was president of the school board there, and and we were active. And But then, of course, it got annexed to, to Stillwater Schools because we only had, I think, 13 in the school when my seventh grade. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then did you ride the bus into Stillwater? We did. We rode the bus every day. Yes, we did. It was a long ride. <laughs> Kids complain about that today, but we had a long ride. Probably, I bet you it was at least 45 minutes long. Wow. So we just did it. Mm -hmm. We just did it. And did you live on the farm the whole time you were growing up? Yes, I did. I did until I uh, left here in 1961. Well, what were some classes that you particularly remember? Mm -hmm. Well, I really liked my nutrition classes and I liked my chemistry classes. I thought the chemistry teachers were just fantastic. And, um, and uh, I suppose those were my top classes that I really appreciated so much. And I, of course, I liked all the uh, all the classes over in the College of Human Sciences, that's what it's called now. I thought they were, uh, the teachers were very caring and got you very involved and we had smaller classes. So I appreciated that. So I would say those were my favorites. Were there any faculty member that, members that were <sighs> particularly influential in your development? I was trying to think of names because I thought you might ask me that question. And, um, I, the nutrition instructor, Mrs. Leidig, Mary Leidig, was in food and nutrition for a long time and even sent us wonderful newsletters after we graduated, which mm -hmm. I thought was very nice. And, um, and Mrs. Cur Ms. Courier, I believe, was taught, it was a start with a C, I think it was Courier. Uh, she was a wonderful nutrition teacher. And I was trying to think of my chemistry teacher and um, I knew my high school chemistry teacher, and I could not remember the name of that chemistry teacher. That I can picture her, but I'd need to look through my yearbook, I guess, to figure that out. By the way, in those days, we had the red skin. I have no idea if you still do this at OSU, but we had these wonderful, huge yearbooks that had everything in them, and maybe that's changed, too. It has. They don't do those anymore. <laughs> but during homecoming, the library sets out a collection of the Redskins down in the lobby, so people that are here for homecoming can look through. Well, I have my Redskins, and I still look back through them, and <laughs> people will look through that now and say, oh, my, look at that. <laughs> it, because, you know, even looking at the basketball uniforms, realize how much things have changed. Yeah. Do you remember any buildings that your classes were in? Oh, sure. The, um, uh, the College of Human Services is still, that building's still in existence because that's one we're going to today. And uh, the food and nutrition classes were in a small little building um, on the more of the eastern side of the campus. I don't know if that building's still there or not. It, might, it was old and kind of a derelict then, so I don't know if it still exists. The classroom building mm -hmm. and our chemistry, a lot of our chemistry labs were in Quonset huts just on the um, north side of this library. And those are probably all gone. Mm -hmm. Did you have any classes in Old Central? Uh, English class, um, I took summer school between, I believe, it was either between my senior in high school and freshman year, I took English, and was, that was in Old Central. It's the only class I had in Old Central. But I'd be sure I'd be sure to show my husband that today, Old Central. Yeah. I'm really nice that they've kept that as a, it should be, yeah. for historic sake, that is a very important building, because I believe it was the first building on this campus. I think so, and now the Honors College is held there. Oh, okay. So, um, they've oh, really done good. some nice improvements to it recently. That's wonderful. Did you study in the library? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Many, many nights were spent in the library. Did you have a favorite spot? 
we called them carols in those days. Which carol were we going to? Um, and um, probably it was it wasn't on sometimes on first floor, either end of the first floor, and sometimes up our second floor, I believe. I don't remember exactly, but but many evenings I spent here at this library. Do you remember there being a dress code? You know, I don't remember specifically a dress code, but we, in those days, we didn't wear blue jeans. That was not part of our dress. Um, and I believe we did start wearing slacks during that time. But we mostly wore skirts. It was, I guess, the thing you did. You didn't think about it. We've heard a lot of people talk about the curfews and the dorms. Yes. If you were living off campus, did everything close down at a certain time? Or? I just remember my, my friends, my girlfriends uh, in dormitories, of course, it was just strictly all girls' dorms or boys' dorms, and I'm sure those are intermingled today, I don't know, but a lot of campuses do that today. Um, and they always had curfews when they had to be in. But most of the time I was home. I've always been a morning person um, and not a night person. I still am that to this day. I can get up at 5 or 6 o'clock, do my exercise, all that stuff, and go, 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 go. And by 10 or 11 o'clock, I want to be in bed. And, you know, I haven't changed. So I, I probably... And the other thing that was different then is that uh, it was still a dry state until 1959, okay? Um, and I believe that's when you could get... I don't know quite how that law became. I know that's when... Oklahoma no longer became a dry state in 1959. So in 1957, all the way through college, you did not see any drinking at all. And you, as a sorority member, we were told not to hmm. imbibe. So, <laughs> and I'm sure that's changed a little bit today. Um, but I know people say, how could you have handled that, Carol? My goodness, because they were college, you know, they go da da da. I said, well, you know, I don't know. It's, that's how we grew up. and. There was never any bar, there weren't any bars, and there weren't any places to get alcohol. Mm -hmm. There weren't any liquor stores. So that's what you did. So in 1959, do you re recall there being much of a change? No, the... not at that time. I think it took time for that all to, because then I came back to visit, because I have family, of course, that lived here. And we come back to visit, and my sister said, well, now we can go out and and uh, Carolyn, you can bring in your own bottle. I think that's how it was. And you could buy setups mm -hmm. at first. Um, but now I notice that you can walk in and order a cocktail if you so desire. Mm -hmm. I haven't done that in Stillwater yet, but I did that in Oklahoma City the other night. So. <laughs> <laughs> Were you involved in campus activities oh, or organizations? I, was. <laughs> I loved campus. Um, and. Um, I did not go through Rush beginning of my freshman year. I went through Rush after Rush week. Um, I met a nice girl in my chemistry class, and she happened to be an Alpha Chi Omega, and that's, we got to know each other really well, and that's how probably how I would, got invited to become an Alpha Chi Omega. And um, I enjoyed that because it was a way to have social friends, and on a big campus you need some kind of a group, I think, to identify with. And that was really good for me, and they were really a nice group of girls. Um, and then I got involved with uh, the Home Economics Club at that time. Um, and also, I was really active in the Lutheran Student Association. And then that led me to University Religious Council, which at, I don't even know if that club exists. And uh, various other organizations I belonged to. Um, and then later, I was named to, asked to be a part of mortar board, and we rode in the parade on tandem bicycles. I don't know <laughs> if they still do that anymore, but uh, that was lots of fun. We had our little white blazers on, and and uh, our, we had black shorts. I have a picture of that. I probably that probably an archival picture uh, of riding in the parade on throwing out candy from the tandem bicycles, yeah. oh yes. We would love a copy. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have a copy of that. Someone took a picture when my, uh, it's your senior year, of course, uh, when we did that. So yes, activities were very, very important to me. And I think college has a great purpose. Not, it, it teaches you a discipline, but it also teaches you how to analyze 
uh, how to do some critical thinking, how to evaluate, how to put your ideas together. Um, and that's one reason college has such an imp important part for me in my life. What were some activities you would do for fun? <laughs> well, we had all, of course, all these crazy things like hay rides. Um, uh, Who organized the hay rides? Was that a through? sorority or fraternity would organize our dormitory, and you, uh, the the farmers would come in, and my father used to do that sometimes. You bring the hay rack in, and they put sides on it, and you all climb on the hay rack, and you drive out to a, a farm someplace, and they do a big wiener roast. That was a big deal. Probably would not be a big deal to kids today, but it was lots of fun. We had dances, and um, there were a lot of things going on. Where would you hang out? In on campus or off campus? Student Union. A lot. What do you remember about the student union? Just a nice place to go over and take a break and and I never drank coffee in those days. I that was an adult thing I learned later in life, I guess. But in college I didn't drink coffee, but um, I thought it had such a bitter taste. Isn't that crazy? Now I think <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, uh, Yes, I would say the student union was kind of my hangout, walking around Theta Pond. I'm so glad that that has been kept in its beauty because it's, it's just a gorgeous spot. Mm -hmm. Particularly in the spring and the fall, it was a nice place to go sit and take a break. Or sit out in front of the library, we'd go do that, take a break, then you go back in and study. Was there any other wildlife around Theta Pond at the time? No, just those ducks, they're still there. Well, we've heard a few stories about an alligator that lived in the pond. <laughs> well, now, I never saw the alligator. <laughs> Did you ever witness anyone being thrown into Theta Pond? Uh, yes. Uh, my brother-in-law, they used to do that after people were um, uh, married, and he had to wheel my sister down in the wheelbarrow down Main Street in Stillwater, and then... They took him to Theta Pond and threw him in. So I witnessed that, but I didn't witness other people being thrown in. I, I guess, does that happen on a regular basis now? Appa well, not now, but back then, apparently, it happens um, when people were engaged or if they got married. Or I, I don't remember any of that. I mean, I, I don't, we had, well, in the sorority, you know, you have these pinning things, and or when you blow a candle out when you sing the song or whatever, I remember that, but I don't remember anyone being thrown in. But maybe fraternities did that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, did you play bridge? I didn't then. I learned that in 1961 when I went to Europe, because after I graduated I went to Europe on a study group for 10 weeks, and that's when I learned to play bridge. <laughs> but I didn't, but a lot of my sorority sisters played bridge. That was a big thing. And to watch soap operas. They did that in the afternoon sometimes. I remember those things. Do you remember any particular soap operas? No, because I never watched them. But I mean, I just remember them talking about uh, whatever happened that day, and they had to see what was going to happen. But I don't particularly remember the names, no. When you did live in the sorority, did you eat in the yes, sorority? Yes, yes, I did. I think it was like... A uh, student what did a student teaching for uh, nine weeks or ten weeks, something like that. And that's when they had vacancies, and so some of us from the local community could move in for that nine weeks to fill in the void. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was really a nice experience for me, yes. Did you ever have to do any time in the home management house? I did not have do that because I had a minor in uh, home economics education, and I would have had to fulfill that at a later time. And and I, evidently that just got kind of, I didn't do it uh, uh, because also because I was working and going to school. Where did you work? At RJ Cleaners, which is long gone by now. I was on Washington Street um, and uh, that's where I worked. Started there in junior and high school and then worked through my senior year. Of college? College. Wow. Yeah. It helped pay the bills because mm -hmm. I had to pay for all my own college education. How much would you work in a week? Do you oh, recall? probably 20 hours. Hmm. 20, 25 hours, something like that, whatever I could work in in between classes. Did you ever attend any Allied Arts 
events? Yes, those were very important. And uh, we got, what, four or five at that time free tickets to, as a student, you got these tickets to go, and you also got your football tickets. And I don't know how that works today, but if you were a full-time student, you were able to go to those things, yes. Are there any, any concerts that I could go to, you know, when they'd bring in a symphony or they'd bring in a, a group to play. I remember seeing the Kingston Trio one time they came in here, and that was a wonderful, wonderful event. Um, and it was in the field house then, which is now, I believe you call the Gallagher Iva at that time, okay, yes. What about sporting events? Did you attend many? A few. Um, I attended football games whenever we, we had to trade because we had to work on Saturdays down there at, the, at the RJ Cleaners. I was a recept, um, cashier and in charge of the furs my senior year and stuff. So whenever we could, we, we tried to switch off between two or three of us so we could attend football games and then uh, some basketball games, maybe a few wrestling matches, not too many. Um, yes, that's probably, and girl sports were just kind of non-existent in those days. You look through the red skin and you'll see that, oh, I'm just so glad that things have improved for women. Mm -hmm. They really have. Because now you can, there's sport, sporting teams for you and we didn't have that. That's a big change. Sure. You just mentioned that you were in charge of furs. Yes, well, people would bring their furs into uh -huh. the furrier, and we had cold storage. And so I had to write up the contract and everything and make sure everything, and then check it back out to them when they came and picked it up in the fall, and they'd bring it in the spring. And So <laughs> so you would just house them for the summer? Yes, in wow. this cold storage unit. Yes, uh -huh. it was a huge cold storage unit. They had the cleaners. And some people, they'd bring in all their winter clothes, and we'd, we'd uh, clean them and bag them and... And then I was just in charge of making sure that they were in the right place and everybody could find them and, hey, it was a job and it worked. Yeah. Do you recall how much someone would pay to keep their fur coat over the summer? Oh, you know, I don't remember that amount. I don't. I, I, I just don't remember. I, I, you know, at the time I probably thought it was expensive, but I don't remember. Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> I think people sometimes still do that today, but now with different kinds of homes and everything, people probably don't do that as much. Did you date in college? Of course. <laughs> Where would you go on dates? <laughs> well, uh, movies, and then there were always there were always activities. You know, sororities and fraternities had so many different dances and groups going and. The student union would have activities going on, or there was a sporting event, you went to a sporting event. Um, that's, if any, a lot of different organizations had different kinds of activities, so that's what you would do. Would you ever go to any restaurants or soda shops not off campus? So, not so much in those days. Um, I don't remember. Uh, a gentleman ever in those days you always expected the gentleman to ask you out uh, ask just going out for dinner I just don't think he did that did you have a car no I, my parents had a car and sometimes I was able to use that but I did not have a car and many students did not have cars in those days there were a few but I would say that was a rarity then rather than a commonplace and some guys had cars. Men, uh, the gentlemen, seemed to have cars more than the ladies. Would you ever go out to Yost Lake? Yes, but I don't think. Maybe I went out there one time. There was also Boomer Lake at that time, Lake Car Blackwell. Um, but rare visits to those places. Do you remember um, emphasis weeks, like religious emphasis week, or howdy week, or? Well, homecoming week, that was always a big thing. And I, as my husband and I parked at the OSU Foundation this morning, and were welcomed there, then we walked to campus, and as we walked by the Sigma Chi's, I believe it, I'm not sure when that's the right house, 
they were so busy working on it. I can remember working midnights, uh, getting floats ready. Um, we did huge floats in those days for parade. I'll be interested in what they have tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Are you going? Uh, yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> I'm taking in everything I can this weekend. I'm here and I want to see what it was like. And even though 50 years ago, you don't quite, but the, the homecoming was a huge weekend. And we also had various contests on campus. Um, uh, I'm not for sure what they were called, but they had like these singing groups that performed and different groups got together and rehearsed a lot. And then you performed for, a, uh, I remember we sang Bally High. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not for sure what that was all about. But, um, and I believe we had a religious week and University Religious Council that I was president of for either one or two years. Um, and uh, yes, and we brought in various speakers on campus, yeah. I think Holly Selassie from Ethiopia came here and because of my leadership roles, I believe I got to shake his hand. Um, that was a kind of an important day. Yeah, that's pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate, um, I learned a lot in, uh, I think organizations are very important in a student's life and getting involved with something and gives you leadership responsibilities and your ability to communicate and organize. Mm -hmm. Of course, I enjoyed that, so it helped me grow and mature as a person. Well, more about homecoming. What other, was it a whole week of activities besides the pomping and preparing? I just remember the preparing because we'd have to take our time slot to work on the float or our time slot. We didn't have housing decorations so much those days. They did floats. Um, and I just remember taking a, a various time. Everybody had to work on it so many hours and putting in the crepe paper and cutting the, all that stuff. Um, and designing it, of course, and yeah. So you were busy. Yeah. And would you always go to the homecoming football game, or was that another? Tried to if I didn't have to work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Homecoming was uh, the parade was I thought a wonderful thing, and it was always always a big thing at OSU campus. It wasn't considered a minor thing. It was a big thing. I think it still must be pretty big. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> It's big. That's a major event. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, well, I, I guess if you started in 1957, the university had just switched names to Oklahoma State. Just a few years before that, I believe. Was yeah. there still any discussion about that or opinions or being from Stillwater? Did you hear people grumbling or in praise of the name switch? I would say that people thought it was a good thing to switch to Oklahoma State University. I didn't ever hear any grumbling about it. Um, and I also remember my father bringing us to uh, the Student Union when it was first dedicated. That was quite some time before that, but when the first Student Union had a dedication, we went to it. Do you remember some of the events surrounding that? Was there a ribbon cutting? Or a yes, <laughs> yes, the traditional things, but they're not specific in my mind, but uh, it was in the reception and it was all very nice and bands playing, the band playing and so forth. Band's always been an important part mm -hmm. um, and I've always liked music, so that's been an important part of my life. In my professional life too, band music has been very important. I played in the high school band, not in the college band, but... What did you play? French horn. Well, what about the Pistol Pete mascot? Do you? <laughs> oh, yes. He was around then. <laughs> um, that's okay. That was nothing, you know, he was certainly around. Everyone, yeah. There's nothing major in my life, but it's okay. <laughs> it's good to have those things. Do you remember any big issues that students were talking about on campus at the time? No, I don't remember anything big and that would cause a big controversy at the time. 
I think they had a panty raid once in a girls' dormitory. That's probably one of the most <laughs> things that people got um, and talked about, but no, I don't. It was elections were talked about. We had mock uh, presidential elections, um, sort of some political discussion. I, I don't remember any controversial issue. Well, are there some, or is there a, one place on campus that is very special to you? Well, I would say the library and student union uh, are still, still hold really special spots for me. Um, of course, I spent time at the sorority house. That's changed too, so um, I walked by that house today and I think it's now the Phi Delta Theta house. Um, so those things, um, but I would say the union and the library still hold really special uh, in my heart. Classroom building, that's a classroom, so those, those are a whole two many special spots. And the food nutrition building, that was, I spent so much time there my senior year, it was like I lived there, so. <laughs> what are some of your favorite memories from your time at OSU? Being accepted for who you were and what you did was so much different than high school. Um, and I really appreciate that at OSU. In high school, it's very cliquish. And uh, if you were not from a wealthy family in high school, you were considered like a nobody. And in, high, in college, I came to college, and that was just a totally different picture. You were accepted for what you could do in the classroom, for who you could be, and for who you were. And it had nothing to do with um, your income. It had nothing to do with the car you drove. It had. It was such an accepting environment that that's what stimulated me to excel, and I'm very thankful for that. I did not feel I was um, judged based on those things uh, that I consider to be very small in life. So I would say that was what I really enjoyed at OSU. And it encouraged me to go on. I mean, there wasn't a professor I didn't have that didn't encourage you to, to achieve your highest potential and who you were. And that's what I t I've taught for 27 years, worked as a dietitian for many years. And one thing I've always tried to emphasize to the young is that thinking and studying it makes it worth it. Even at the time you don't think it's so important, it really is important. So OSU obviously had a big impact on your life and opening up your future and allowing oh, you to absolutely. grow. Absolutely. Oh, yes. I wouldn't be able to have done the things I've done without uh, having go been able to go to school. And I really appreciate that. And I think OSU also makes the community of Stillwater a better place. Culturally, uh, intellectually, environmentally, there's just so many things that OSU adds to this community of Stillwater, Oklahoma. And it would be a lost little community without OSU. What is it about Oklahoma State that sparks loyalty in students and alumni? Uh, well, I think when you've gone to a school that you really liked, you always have um, an attached loyalty to it. It's hard to, to take that away. Um, I really have a difficult time, even though OU is a nice place, I have a kind of a, and if they win football, that's, and that's not a big deal to me, but I still am pretty loyal to OSU just because it was a, it was a place that I went to school, and I have a loyalty to it. They treated me right. Um, I learned a lot, um, and I think I'm a better person because I went to Oklahoma State.
Well, you said you went to Europe after I you did. graduated. Where did you go in Europe? Well, in 1961, um, the uh, Lutheran Church, uh, National Lutheran Council, they posted this little sign at, at um, the Lutheran Student Association over at Salem Lutheran and said, uh, apply to go to, to study abroad. And I thought, oh, that's what I want to do. I want to go someplace. So I applied, and luckily I was one chosen. They chose 15 of us across the United States. So we met in um, New York. We didn't know each other at all. We were from all parts of the United States. And uh, we studied in Sweden, Denmark, and Germany. Mm -hmm. And a 10 week wonderful, wonderful experience. In fact, that group still gets together. There are 13 living now, the 15, mm -hmm. and we just met together in July, eight of us. Wow. And we're still studying. We still review books. And mm -hmm. uh, it was a marvelous experience. And such a great group of inquisitive minds um, uh, eight, eight gentlemen and seven ladies. So it was wonderful. What were you called? This is called the European Study Project. And did they do that another year? No, I don't think they have. And we discussed that at our last group. And in fact, I'm writing up an article now talking about that, that was our 50th reunion, how important that was to us and what it did for us and why these kind of things still need to be done today. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that it did have a, a great purpose. And it was worth, uh, we had to pay a little bit of the money, but a lot of it was mostly scholarships that we got. So that was a big help to most of us in those days to be able to go. So was just having the international experience part of what was so important? Just experiencing another Yes, way of I life? mean, most of us had never, I almost all of us had never been to Europe. And uh, we were, had teachers from throughout the world coming in and and uh, g giving these seminars and these lectures. And then we'd tour certain areas and that would be, um, the lecture would emphasize whatever we had, wherever we were going uh, to tour. And then we'd come back and discuss it and the relevancy of that. Um, so yes, it was an, an enlightening experience and also opened you up to the fact that people across the world are just, um, the, the diversity of people, learning to accept people at all levels, uh, learning to engage in other discussions is just something I always recommend to students. If you can study abroad for a semester, do it. I feel like there's a bigger push now for that, but there's still a lot of people that wonder why they should take the time to do something like this, and they aren't sure they understand the implications, so it's great to hear you say what an impact that's had. It's very positive, and I've always encouraged people to, to do that. It's just, it's an eye-opener. If you just stay in a small area your whole life, you don't get exposed to other people and other languages, and finding out that there are many different people that make the world go round, and we need more of that to, to achieve a peaceful nation. Definitely. And accepting of others. So important. So when you returned from that, what did you do? I started a dietetic internship at University of Chicago, and um, there was another girl from Oklahoma State University at that time. I was hoping she'd be able to come to this reunion because we have kept up with each other throughout these years, but she lives in Tucson, Arizona now. Um, but she couldn't, and I really, um, it was an internship for a year, and then you took an exam, and then you became a dietitian. And then uh, I worked for a year as a dietitian, and then I went to Michigan State uh, on a fellowship to get my master's in nutrition. And that's where I met my husband. And so that's changed my life. And, and you currently live in, in South Bend, Indiana. Have you been there for some since time? 1967 in South Bend? Yes. We both uh, are now retired, so we travel a lot and so forth. So have you been back to OSU many times since I have been back to Stillwater, but, and I have walked on the campus several times, but I haven't been uh, here during homecoming since I left. Uh, during the year, when you're a school teacher or you're working, and my husband was teaching also, you can't always get back here during these kind of weekends. but. 
so this is my first time be back to homecoming since uh, fall of 1960. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm sure you've noticed a few changes around campus. Yes. yes. <laughs> Probably since the last time you were yes. here. Yes. Oh, yes. It's, it's And I'm looking forward to the golf tour today, yeah. the cart, cart tour, that because be uh, that should be good, too. Well, do you have any advice to give to OSU students today or students thinking about attending OSU? Well, follow your passion. Um, we have a wonderful daughter that um, excelled in, in, in school and uh, when she was ready to choose a college and ready to choose a major, um, my advice to her was to follow your passion, major in what you want, the, the, what you like best and things will work out. And uh, so she has two degrees, a degree, and I'm diversing here just to tell you why it's important to follow your passion. Uh, a degree in English and a degree in cello performance. And uh, now she's actually in the IT world. Uh, but it's because of her English skills and her, all her music theory that she's able to do that. So, and she's a very happy person. She still does music on the side, but mm -hmm. I, I think if you're just going for a job because you think it pays well or you think it's going to, it's popular, you have to really follow what you want to do. And if you want to be an engineer or something like this, OSU has an excellent school of engineering. Um, there are, of course, different areas that schools excel in, but I think a ba basic bachelor's degree that allows you to critically analyze, think, write, learning to write. I know people use computers today, but you still got to be able to write. Um, so I would say that it's a good place and you will get a good education, but you also have to put yourself into it. Um, people don't give you something. You have to put yourself totally in, and get yourself totally involved and don't be afraid to raise your hand and say, I will do that. That's great advice. So that's my advice to any kid thinking about, any student thinking about college. It's, um, and you may not know what you want to major in your freshman year. Maybe you'll just be taking basic courses. I mean, some students do that. So uh, I was just one of those ones that knew my, I think I, I think I was too straightforward and I should have diversed a little bit, but that's what happened. And you would encourage students to pursue a, an international experience if possible? I would say if you can st study a term abroad, don't be afraid to go. Do it. Absolutely. I think those programs open up a whole new avenue for people. And if you want to broaden your horizons and make this world a better place, um, I think they really are there to help. And there's just some, I know OSU has some wonderful programs. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to talk about? No, oh, I appreciate you very much, Latasha. I think you have. I don't know what's your major, by the way. I got my master's in international studies. Okay, <laughs> good for you. So you have been abroad, I take it? I have. And would you agree with me? I would very much. Yes, I, I think it would benefit. It, it does benefit every student that can have that experience. So hopefully we can get more people yeah. doing that. There are, there are drawbacks. My husband and I were fortunate that in uh, 1985 to 87 we lived in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And one of the best experiences in our lives, mm -hmm. um, he was associated with the university there and I worked as a counselor on the campus. That was the second thought. I mean, I didn't go there with a job. They, when I got there, then they found this job. Our daughter got to go to an international school. And that was such an eye-opening experience to be engaged in another country and live there and follow their routine. Um, you can't walk in there thinking that you're in the United States. You have to learn how, as you know, to respect the country in which you live and to follow their rules and to 
adjust accordingly. So, yeah, it was an amazing, wonderful experience. And I'd advise you, anyone that can do that, if you can live abroad for a year, do it. Mm. Well, thank you very much ah, for visiting with me thank today. You.